High above the Arctic Circle, hundreds of polar bears are about to become marooned on an island. The ice flows are melting, leaving the bears high and dry. To capture this phenomenon on film, two men will have to live surrounded by the world's biggest land carnivore. And when an orphan blows in on a storm, it too faces a struggle for survival. Until the ice returns, only the toughest will make it through a stay in polar bear Alcatraz. The cold beauty of the Russian Arctic envelops Wrangel Island. Winter temperatures can plunge to as low as minus 35 Celsius. The ice of the Chukchi and East Siberian seas hems in the island for most of the year. At its peak, 14 million square kilometers of ice covers the whole of the Arctic Ocean. Perfect for those adapted to the big chill, like polar bears and their favorite prey, ringed seals, whose pups are almost 50% blubber. This is the land of the Chukchi Alaska population of polar bears. They favor Wrangell like no other place in the Arctic. These bears wander thousands of kilometers between northwestern Alaska and eastern Siberia. Lying west of the Bering Strait and north of Siberia, Wrangell is a vital toehold for wildlife in a frozen landscape. Of the 22,000 or so polar bears left in the world, the highest density of all can be found right here. Even so, scientists believe that this species could be treading on thin ice. Climate change is advancing the melting of the polar ice sheet so fast that polar bears could be heading for extinction this century. With so many females giving birth on Wrangell, the island is vital for their survival. Filmmaker Arne Nevra has spent years living alongside polar bears in Svalbard. He's now coming to Wrangell to capture its unique story. I'm really excited. I heard so much about this place from my friend Nikita. But this will be the first time I see the strange polar bear phenomenon with my own eyes. He's headed for Cape Blossom on the island's southwestern tip. One of the biggest polar bear hotspots of all. Dozens of them congregate on this peninsula. For most of the year, the sea around Wrangell is almost completely frozen. But during the short summer, the pack ice melts. Some years, fragments of sea ice remain and the bears continue hunting on the floes away from land. Not for nothing is its scientific name Ursus maritimus, the sea bear. But every few years, water cuts off the island entirely. For bears caught on the edges of the receding ice, Wrangell becomes a vital staging post. But stopping here can mean getting stuck for weeks. Given that scientists have tracked polar bears swimming for up to 161 kilometers, why do they opt for this stint of incarceration? Perhaps like shipwrecked mariners, the bears become stranded, forced to wait for rescue, 
Arne too has come prepared to maroon himself and wrangle. More than 5,000 kilometers from his family home in Norway, his pulse quickens with the first sight of Cape Blossom, where one extraordinary man, Nikita Ovsianikov, and his dog Nanook are waiting to welcome him. As Arne greets his old friend, he quickly spots why trust will play a big part in this assignment. This has been Nikita's home from home for nearly two decades. No one knows the polar bears of Wrangel like Nikita of Sianikov. And no one quite knows when or how this expedition will end. Nikita lays down the ground rules. Uh, here, this year, I have uh, problem situations, uh, situation with bears, so please follow my instructions precisely. The problem is not so much the bears are trapped again. After all, that's why both men are here. This is one of those years when there is open water as far as the eye can see. But the Pacific walruses are playing hard to get. Normally, Cape Blossom is a walrus rookery. The stakes are high, as this is the biggest land predator of all. The men will never be able to let their guard down. An overcurious or hungry bear could create a dangerous situation. <laughs> the boundaries must be enforced, but Nikita refuses to carry a gun. And even though Arne is used to filming near polar bears, He's impressed by Nikita's personal light touch. The sheer numbers of bears here may be a clear and present danger, but they also offer unparalleled advantages for the eager cameraman. The ice has been steadily retreating for the past few weeks. Arne notices the same mother and her two cubs pass by Nikita's cabin every day on their way to the tip of the Cape, where they gather on the beach in search of food. but there's little scent of any prey in the air. The bears are truly high and dry. But there's no time to take in the scenery, as suddenly, out of the blue, Arne gets his first close encounter on Wrangel, and Nikita captures it on film. <laughs> A rather skinny adult male strays too close. Arne wants to get the bear's picture, but he also needs to push it away. He's going to have to be prepared for more of these encounters if he's to survive in Nikita's neighborhood. Despite being given the Inuit name for polar bear, the dog Nanook is in danger of fanning the flames. Bears are often active at night, and with tensions between humans and animals escalating, Nikita and Arne must be extremely vigilant.
Will spikes and bars be enough to see the two men through the night? In spite of their defenses, an intruder breaks in. What a way to, to wake up in the middle of the night. Sleeping in a dark room, of course, and hear this, this loud sound. And uh, Nikita was on his feet in a second or so. I tried to grab my camera to, to film this event. But uh, I was too late. Uh, when I actually came out here, he had uh, given the, the pepper spray, and, and that was that. It's not good to be in the same room as a, as a polar bear, that's, that's for sure. But I think she was after our, our meat rather than us. Nikita wastes no time securing the damage. In the morning, a young male is on the prowl. He's not big enough to be last night's visitor, though. Arne gives this newcomer an Inuit name for ice, Siku. This one is probably also drawn by the smell of reindeer meat in Akita's larder. Time for Arne to meet his neighbors on his own terms. He wants to see for himself how they've been coping with a summer of little or no food, far from the ice. It'll be several weeks before the ice returns. Not a good omen for the bears or the men. As their natural prey disappears, human habitations may be well worth a second look. No harm in trying, at least. On the beach, there's that female again with her two cubs, leaving the cape. Probably not a good day's hunting, and things can only get worse. Nikita and Arne watch her with interest. Polar bears are solitary, except during times of vital social bonding, such as when bringing up cubs. Males do not raise their offspring. It's the mothers that provide all the parental care. A small cub offers few calories, but adult bears do sometimes kill infants, perhaps to wipe out competitors' genes and force a female to mate again. The polar bear is a heavyweight champion, and despite its massive bulk, it can charge at speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour. Taken by this little family, Arne decides to give the mother a nickname, Ursula, after Ursus Maritimus. He watches as she leads her cubs from an old hunting ground. Walrus carcasses are often still here from the previous years, when the polar bears gorged on the fat and discarded the rest of the bodies. Luckily, Ursula has up to 11 centimeters of blubber under her own fur to see her through these lean times. Cubs normally stick with their mother for about two and a half years. Their survival on the ice depends on her. If only it would return. Because this year the walruses are staying away from the beach where normally they haul themselves out of the water, they huddle offshore, 
seemingly content to let their predators pick over the remains of the dead. Perhaps the number of stranded bears is just too much of a deterrent. Nikita uses a disused ship's navigation tower as shelter during his long hours headcounting. In past years, these shores would have offered plenty of fresh walrus blubber for more than 100 polar bears. Nikita knows he's counted them. But very few of the carcasses are here from polar bear kills. Most of these victims were crushed to death in their panic to get back into the water when the colony was spooked. By rights, the bears should be gorging on fresh blubber right now, leaving the meat behind for the snowy owls. Arne wonders how normally solitary nomads cohabit without friction. Could one reason be the need to conserve energy? With such a huge build, they can expend far more energy than most mammals. Hence their preference for still hunting, sitting over ice holes waiting for a seal to pop up for air, better than taking the plunge to open water. Polar bears manage to catch their prey less than 2% of the time. But these odds may still be better than trying to land an uncooperative reindeer. And walrus that won't come out of the water. With only meager scraps from years gone by, Nikita's shack with its full larder is a beacon in a land of want. The bear's prospects of a fresh meal diminish, but it could be a lot worse. At least Nikita protects them from poachers, although his and Arne's own survival must come first. But so far, Nikita has had around a thousand encounters with polar bears without any harm to himself or the bears. His unique policing technique pays off. Nikita uses a psychological approach. Polar bears are highly inquisitive animals with a keen ability to learn new things. In spite of keeping the bears at arm's length, he lives as close as is humanly possible to them. Without his daring intimacy, he couldn't examine year after year the changes that take place in their behavior. His work is a crucial contribution to our understanding of the polar bear's chances of survival in the face of climate change. And after so many years living alongside polar bears, Nikita knows how they operate. Research shows that in almost all cases, polar bears attacking people were either provoked or desperate for food. People walking or running away can also trigger the bear's instincts to give chase to a potential prey animal. Here comes Siku again. The juvenile male is always too nosy for his own good. I think he's just curious about what's going on here, but also he's checking campground in hope to find some remains. So I have to push him away and not to let him get used for staying with us. Nanook, though, has someone else in his sights. Is this Ursula hanging around again? Nanook is a hardy Samoid 
but he's barely on the right side of the thin divide between life and death. If this is the female that Arne calls Ursula, then something is wrong. She had two cubs. A female would never leave a cub behind unless something had happened. An adult may be able to take life on Cape Blossom in its stride, but cubs face a daunting future alone. Around here, nothing is certain. Despite 25 years in the field, Wrangle has some new lessons for Arne. Standing on its rear legs, this fully grown colossus could look an elephant in the eye. And it's hardly likely to be intimidated by Arne's makeshift defenses. After the stick, the pepper spray into the bear's face is the last line of defense, if he's unfortunate enough to get that close. But after three weeks on Nikita's self-defense course, Arnie's giving the right signals to the bear, at the same time as doing his day job, getting up close and personal with an animal he loves and respects. This male has obviously been to Nikita's classes too, and it seems to sense a fight would not be worth its while. As the autumn draws on, the walruses are still refusing to haul onto the beach. Bad news for the polar bear, good news for the walrus. It wasn't always this way. For years, Nikita has been recording these two titans of the Arctic going head to head. Normally, tens of thousands of Pacific walruses haul themselves out of the water to rest here. To take on prey this size, the polar bear needs not only strong teeth, but a very large stomach. And that's precisely what it's got for those big meals that make up for leaner times. It can devour up to 45 kilos of blubber in one sitting. Not this time. A full-grown female walrus merely rolls away. Having shooed perhaps smaller prey back into the water, what's left? How about a sick female? But the walrus barely raises a whisker and is rewarded with the warmest bear hug of all. A walrus can weigh three times more than a polar bear and is encased in a layer of blubber and skin that's over 15 centimeters thick. usual walrus bounty in ice-free years perhaps explains why the bears opt for a stint on Wrangle. An empty beach and high winds coming in off the sea puts an end to the day's filming. Arne wonders whether the bears need to see pack ice on the sea before they risk taking to the water. But it's not very well understood how bears know whether the ice is forming. The magic of an Arctic morning. A cameraman's dream and a new twist to his story.
A cub blown in on the storm. Its mother is nowhere to be seen. Less than a year old, Nikita knows it cannot fend for itself and it's probably hungry. The cub's identity and why it was separated from its mother are mysteries the men are keen to unravel. Nikita heads for the other side of the island, looking for clues. Will he find a female missing her cub? In such a desperate environment, neither Nikita nor Arne jump to conclusions. Arne will scout the area nearer the cabin. Nikita soon finds more distressing signs of hunger. Then, a more chilling sight. The body of what appears to be a female. A black nipple is clearly visible. Could it be Ursula? And if so, how did she die? Has the situation on Wrangell Island come to cannibalism? The lone cub is still at base camp. Is this its dead mother? Carcasses of the dead are always eaten by the living, but it's not clear how the female died. Unaware of Nikita's discovery, Arne pushes on. A whale swims with its dark grey calf off the point. A snowy owl scours the shoreline for lemming prey. The owls at least have wings and don't rely on the ice to escape. Close to extinction in its native Norway, an arctic fox sniffs for scraps of carrion under the snow. These animals try to find what they need to survive before the winter sets in. Crabs blown in by the storm are a bonus. Arne is an expert in filming in these conditions and he won't risk hypothermia. He takes shelter in Nikita's cabin at the navigation tower. Incredibly, the cub has followed Arne all the way from base camp. Arne wonders why a young wild cub would seem to try and attach itself to a human. Hungry? Still? I know you're not able to catch any seals alone, but uh, try to follow the adult. It's not easy. On the other side of the island, Nikita scours for more clues. Could the dead bear he found be the cub's mother? With the cub safe, 
Arne takes the opportunity to capture the evening light. Over the next few weeks, the cub stays close and the cameras keep rolling. The men's sympathy for the young bear grows. But they're anxious not to let it become dependent on them, even though the mystery about its mother may never be solved before the ice reclaims the island. The elements move in obscure ways in the high Arctic. Here, at the North Pole, the atmosphere conjures up these celestial northern lights. Hallucinating and beautiful as they are, the solar winds that create them are dangerous. Were it not for the Earth's atmosphere, life on our planet would be impossible. They're a restless and disquieting phenomenon for those troubled by events on the ground. Arne's assignment has proved every bit as challenging as he thought. After a month's filming and writing, and with winter on the horizon, he's concerned now about how it'll all end for the bears and for himself. Nothing can be taken for granted on Wrangell. Even simple daily rituals. The bathroom is only a short walk, and with the infamous stick and a nook on sentry duty, Arnie has covered all the bases. But Siku gives the nook the slip. Rude cracks in the door can sometimes save your life. Siku's outwardly endearing curiosity feeds a drive for survival. Arne could charge the bear and assert his authority over the impudent youngster. But time is on Siku's side. Why is it the bears always seem to have the edge? Nikita is on hand to help though he's in no hurry. Let the cameras record this for posterity. A good family laugh back home in Norway. But Nikita knows that ultimately, it's no laughing matter. Of course, the polar bear can easily get through this door if they want to. You must remember, we are living in the middle of the polar bear country. Nikita's got Siku's number. He uh, understands very well the languages of threat. And he uh, is cautious. All polar bears are cautious, so they don't risk to uh, uh, get involved in situations where they can get hurt. So they just, uh, from the very childhood, they uh, learn uh, to respect power, and they uh, understand threat displays and they avoid risk for themselves. So that's why it is possible and in most cases easy to manage interactions with them. This, my friend, is very curious to come back, so <laughs> I should give him a lesson. Ah. 
Arne has to admit that without Nikita and his stick, it would not have been quite so easy. Even Anouk makes up for letting his guard down. If only life on Wrangel Island were always so entertaining. Much of the time is spent on daily chores, but another storm heralding the onset of winter reminds Arne that he must savor every precious moment, even at the outhouse. This time the problem isn't so much getting out safely, but getting in. For the bears, their time too is running out. Adults won't starve here as long as the ice returns. Nor is cold a problem. With their thick layer of blubber and an insulating coat of dense fur, even heat-seeking infrared technology struggles to detect them in the snow. Despite having the same survival gear, cubs are far more vulnerable. So, you pay me a visit, you. You want reindeer meat from our store? This makes life difficult for me too, you know. You are a wild creature, and I'm not supposed to give you any food. But I know what you think. You think that these rules are not made for small polar bear cubs. I could agree on that. I'm not supposed to interfere. That's my problem. Oh, but you are hungry, I know. With a heavy heart, Arne encourages the cub to leave. If it gets used to humans, it could be in for a troubled life. That's if it makes it. Four to six out of every 10 cubs die in their first year from starvation, predation, and accidents. Nanook and the cub keep their distance. The dog tucks into its dinner, all in very poor taste for the little cub. Time could be running out. Arne too must get off the island before winter and 24-hour darkness prevents his own rescue. It's bad news from the mainland. The helicopter schedule to collect Arne next week is grounded indefinitely due to bad weather. I can't help being a little bit frustrated and um, I might very well be stuck here until next spring. Arne's already been in Russia for three months. But is the tide now turning for the bears? Do they feel the ice coming with the winter air? Arne thinks they do. The men are still keen on to interfere with nature, but the remains of a reindeer killed for their larder gives the opportunistic cub a lucky break. Even bears this young are tough. Despite the number of Arctic foxes around, the cub will probably have its fill.
cub probably did manage to stand its ground. Anna's inspection finds a few bear prints. Hopes of finding the cub's mother fade. It was six weeks ago that the female Arnie called Ursula was last seen with her two cubs. Then one day, the sight of a female with fresh meat in its jaws leads to a new clue. And tiny paws bring tears to even the toughest of men. Could this dead youngster be Ursula's cub? Having already found the dead female, the men can't help but wonder. Whatever the identity of the unlucky cub, it was probably alone. Without a mother to protect it, a cub is vulnerable to starvation or attack. Even if the dead bears they found aren't Ursula and her cub, what is clear is that starvation claims many lives on Wrangell. And even the mighty polar bear is not immune. Polar bears have been known to eat the flesh of their own kind. This cub sticks close to its mother. She will put up a vigorous defense if provoked by another bear. But there's something more powerful even than hunger in the air. Something that could save every bear on the island. Winter has arrived, and the ice train is back. A polar bear runs to meet the ice that signals rescue off the island. Winds and waves push newly formed ice irresistibly towards land. A solitary seal heralds the end of a two-month fast for the bears of Wrangell Island. And what about Arnie's little orphan? What will a lone cub make of the big freeze? Adults have seen it all before. They know the ice will free them for a winter of hunting. The permanent ice cap to the north is 50 meters thick in places. And these ice flows are broken off from its edges. The pack ice is what the bears have been waiting for. But maybe not this one. Unless Arnie can convince it otherwise. The men have no idea where this little cub came from and why it attached itself to them. But this could now be Arnie's last chance to say goodbye. Close. No, no, not, not my boot. <laughs> You're checking me out, are you? I think you actually are asking for contact, physical contact. What a situation. I wonder how many people in the world have had this close contact with a polar bear cub. Mm, try to be independent now. We have to leave you very soon anyway. Oh. Known as frazzle ice, its crystals freeze into a thin film of grease ice, strong enough to support a seabird, but not a bear. It won't be long till the flows thicken to a depth of two or three meters.
This summer has given Nikita valuable new data. Starvation becomes more common in times of open sea when the ice is marginal and stormy seas exhaust bears that attempt to hunt. Staying marooned on Wrangell may offer the path of least resistance. Once the ice is thick enough, the bears will start leaving en masse. With only a few hours of daylight now, they'll need to be prepared to keep going in the dark. A few now take the first tentative steps towards freedom. Grooming is essential. A soiled and matted coat offers poor insulation in water. The orphan follows suit. A good sign. Time to hitch a ride for some. And with giant paws for snowshoes, the ice holds up well for others. But this bear spreads its weight over the fragile surface. Arnie has never before seen a bear dragging itself across the ice like a seal. Arnie's favorite Arctic foxes are back for a last appearance. Trust him to get as close as humanly possible. He'll give this shot pride of place back home in Norway. But sadly, not this one. Such are the cruel vagaries of life in the high Arctic, even for the wily fox. As the bears leave, Arne and Nikita ready themselves for their own departure. Arne can't believe his eyes. Go on, you can make it. The men are overjoyed to see the cub taking its own tentative steps towards the ice. Staying close to adult bears, it may be able to feed off their leftovers until it's big enough to hunt alone. And seeing a mother with two cubs far out on the ice, Arne hopes Ursula made it to freedom too. Joined in a common cause, Arne and Nikita will leave Wrangell with their friendship strengthened. And they will take with them the mystery of a little cub with no mother. A young orphan that, against all odds, has shown it was tough enough to survive an uncertain start to life.